The boss. Everybody thought uh, Rick Springsteen was the boss. No chance. There's the boss sitting right over there, David B. Whitaker. <clears throat> David Whitaker is responsible for laying the foundation for Western Kentucky University's nationally recognized journalism program. Known to most simply as Boss, David Whitaker was head of the journalism department from its inception in 1977 until his retirement from the position in 1984. He was director of student publications from 1970 to 1987. His career at WKU began as a student in 1941, but was interrupted by World War II. He was the editor of the College Heights Herald during the 1942-43 school year and began in 1947-48 and again in 1947-48 after returning from active duty from the U.S. Marine Corps. He later served in the Korean War. He began his newspaper career as editor of the Daily Kentuckian, a short-lived Bowling Green publication. When that paper folded, he went to work for the Daily News, where he served as city editor from 1948 to 1951. In 1953, he became, he became a sports writer for the Courier Journal in Louisville and worked in the sports department for 12 years. In 1965, he moved to the Louisville Times, where he worked for five years. In 1970, he returned to the Hill as an associate professor of journalism and director of student publications. When the journalism department was created in 1977, David Whitaker's vision was a professional program with real-world application and national accreditation. He recruited faculty with professional experience, promoted internships for students, and expanded the curriculum to include a nationally prominent photo journalism program. He was named Outstanding WKU Professor in 1978 by Phi Eta Sigma. He was inducted into the Kentucky Journalism Hall of Fame in 1986. David Whitaker was head of the journalism department when I was a student in that department. And you need to know that when we started a department in 1977, it was only after the journalism sequence and a mass communication program proved to be such a viable degree program in and of its own right. He was straightforward, no nonsense. His approach to teaching and to journalism had a profound impact on me personally. A little bit intimidating for the boss to be coordinating a program that I was trying to take courses in at the time. He was my mentor when I was a student and throughout my career. I have tried to follow the example he set so many years ago, both in and out of the classroom. And you must know that in the wake of his leadership, our journalism program for the last five years has been ranked in the top three journalism and broadcasting programs in America by the William Randolph First Foundation and was number one, the number one ranked program in America in 2000 and 2001 a feat that would not have occurred had it not been for the firm foundation established by David Whitaker in that program in its inception in 1977 and for the remaining years thereafter. Uh, he has left a legacy at Western, and I'm honored tonight to induct him into the WKU Hall of Distinguished Alumni, my friend, mentor, and the creator of our program, the foundation on which it was laid, David Whitaker. Let's turn attention to the screen, please. Say the word professionalism at Western Kentucky University and you must be talking about David Whitaker, better known as boss to his students and colleagues. Whitaker's brand of journalism was the beginning of something very special at Western. Dave Whitaker was a very intense, hardworking, sort of inspiring person, I guess. Um, he brought a sense of professionalism to Western to student publications that we previously, you know, hadn't known. Uh, he brought us a sense of professionalism that is th today's program as a result of that. Whitaker started his student career on the Hill in 1941 and was editor of the College Heights Herald in 42 and 43. But with the advent of World War II, he served in the Marine Corps, where he learned some very important lessons on leadership. Outside of uh, newspapers and family, I think the Marine Corps holds a special place for him. And uh, he met a lot of people and saw a lot of uh, you know, the way people do things. And I think it probably shaped his management style. 
In 1947, he took up his editorial duties at the Herald again and graduated from Western in 48. In 1949, he left the Hill with a master's degree and friends who knew he would return someday. Whitaker's newspaper career began in Bowling Green, but he soon found his way to Louisville and the Courier-Journal sports team, only to move to the Louisville Times to join the news staff. In 1970, he once again returned to the Hill. It meant a great deal, not just coming back, but being asked to come back by, by people he respected and, and liked. Uh, he worked in the newspaper business for a long time, made a lot of friends there, but I, I think he still felt like Western was home. I think he felt like he was walking into an ideal situation, a good place to bring his family to. As a teacher, he, he spent a lot of time trying to teach administrators and deans and <clears throat> other people uh, that journalism was different than some other academic disciplines and that the student newspaper, the students had voices and they had a right to, to express opinions and so forth and, and take positions that neither he agreed with or maybe the university agreed with. And that was a, a new concept and he was, a, he was a teacher not only in the classroom and with the students in the newspaper but certainly educating um, deans and vice presidents. In 1977, the journalism department was created and Whitaker's dream of a professional program with accreditation began. The College Heights Herald gained prominence under his direction. The ongoing excellence of the Herald, uh, I think it all sort of, it's partly a product of the fact that Dad didn't just see the, see the department as being academic, it, it was also producing people to, to become good journalists and actually get jobs. Through Whitaker's leadership, the photojournalism major has the distinction of being one of the best programs in the country. Awards and accolades are nothing new to this man, affectionately known as Boss. His hard work and determination laid the foundation for a program of distinction at Western, and his accomplishments continue to benefit students as the journalism program continues to grow. I think his legacy to Western is the journalism program. <clears throat> uh, without his direction at the beginning, <clears throat> there wouldn't be, you know, the same program that we have. 2003 Hall of Distinguished Alumni Honoree David B. Whitaker. Good afternoon. It's an honor to be here and speak on behalf of my father. I think this is uh, maybe some sort of a prank on his part because he was always the, uh, the speaker of the family. Um, but we did share a lot of things, uh, a lot of common interests. Uh, I'm a product of the journalism department and uh, I'm better for it. Uh, <clears throat> Mostly I, I think the journalism department came to be a family uh, some of the people spoke on the video. Uh, some of the people are here today who are key in uh, Dad's work with the journalism department. I think he would want me to recognize them uh, and their roles that they played in building the department. Bob Adams is one of the originals. He was here when Dad came to Western in 1970. Uh, he's been an advisor to the Herald for 30 plus years and does a, a great job, probably at much at great expense to his family life over the years. Uh, Jim Highland is here today. Uh, you may know him from his byline years ago on the Daily News, but he's uh, been uh, on the Western journalism faculty for 25 years or so and was a key part of uh, Dad's building the department, getting it accredited in, <clears throat> in a very few short years back in the 70s. But uh, Dad's family is, is here today. My, my sisters, Julie and Jane. Uh, his uh, grandchildren, Adam, Zach, Rachel. Uh, my wife is here today, Fleur. And uh, we're all honored to be here to uh, see Dad get his recognition after all these years at Western. 
uh, most journalists, I think, accept that uh, there's not always a tremendous amount of recognition that comes with the job. Editors write headlines and correct typos, and nobody really knows what they did. Their name never appears in print. Uh, reporters write stories and don't get bylines. Uh, that's just part of the business, and journalists understand and accept that. But today, uh, I think this is Dad's byline. So I, I appreciate your your uh, appearing on his behalf and being here, and uh, I'm proud to accept this for him. <laughs>